I want to do a real quick initial impression of the Beretta APX. Uh, this is a striker fired handgun from Beretta. It, this particular one is the 9mm. It is the LE version. Came with three 17 round magazines and uh, Ameriglo uh, night sights. Um, it's been a good handgun. Uh, have just over 1,100 rounds through it. Not a lot, but enough to know kind of how it functions, how it handles. Uh, of those 1,100 uh, rounds, they've all been reloads from here at home, uh, so I don't have any factory ammunition through it. I did have one malfunction stoppage, if you will. Uh, it was a stovepipe. Um, that's that's been the extent of it. Um, a couple of things that I like about it. I like that, uh, like. Um, uh, the Sig P320, it is a it is a chassis design where the actual firearm or the serialized part sits inside the grip module. So these grip modules can be swapped out. I will tell you that uh, to change those out, it's not as straightforward and as as quick. I guess uh, it's straightforward, but it's not as quick as the Sig P320. So a little bit a little bit more time involved in swapping that out. But I do like the fact that. Uh, you can do something to the to the grip module itself uh, if it was a duty weapon and, and turn it in uh, if you had the original uh, grip module in no harm done uh, if you chose to to sell it after you'd had it for a while and you'd altered the grip module you could get a different module and drop in it and and it'd be good to go but come standard in black I believe uh, wolf gray and flat dark earth are your other choices for colors um, so I do like that. Um, I like the uh, ambidextrous uh, slide stop or, or slide release. Um, that seems to be working pretty well. Uh, I like the, uh, the metal uh, mag release. Uh, it's not ambidextrous. I think it can be flipped, but I haven't honestly even messed with that. Um, but it'd be nice if, if that was truly ambidextrous. It'd be nice to just come out of the holster and do, and do work for either side. Um... A couple things that are different about it or that I maybe didn't care for as much. Um, as far as takedown, takedown isn't quite as quick as, say, a Glock or a CZP-10C or, or maybe even an m and um, There's a, a button back here to deactivate uh, um, the trigger or the sear. Um, you can do that. You can... Um, we'll go ahead and clear it and check it but it's it's clear and empty um, you can do it similar to the Glock where where you can pull the trigger method so but you do have to start here with the takedown and, and it does require a little bit of pressure to turn that out and then um, you can depress the trigger and the slide will come off um, looking at things here just look at the recoil spring I'm not an engineer and uh, it like I said 1100 rounds and it's working had one stovepipe uh, kind of caught me off guard the first time I, I saw it. It kind of looked like a rat's nest. It really wasn't uh, really wasn't what I was expecting, but uh, I don't know how well you can see that. But uh, spring just kind of looks a little different. But uh, it's my understanding that's that's their design and that's how it is. But uh, um, and then there's the chassis or or the firearm itself, and it does have a full rail on on the on the right hand side, and then just the the cutout for the uh, uh, ejector here on the left side, but uh, that whole system comes out the, the the firearm itself the chassis comes out and uh, the grip module can be swapped out um, a Couple things I noticed uh, in shooting the firearm um, Like I said, it comes with three 17 round magazines um, a black follower you can see that that's empty there um, that's what comes standard with. No problem locking back on an empty mag. Um, no problem with mag changes. Um, I did purchase separately a uh, 21 round, uh, actually a couple 21 round uh, Beretta magazines for the APX. Uh, function fine with the exception of uh, locking back. I've noticed that, uh, and I'll try to get my hand out of the way so you can tell that I'm not hitting anything, but it will... Uh, this particular mag and the other 21 round mag that I have, it will not lock back on an empty mag. So I thought that was kind of a little odd here again with the 17 round mag. It locks right back like it should. Um, so at first that kind of threw me off. I thought, well, maybe my thumb's creeping up there on that slide slide stop. But 
that wasn't the case. It was actually actually the magazine. Um, but I got both of those from direct from Beretta, the 21 rounders that that wouldn't lock back. So did notice that. And then um, the other thing with uh, with a loaded firearm. I noticed that it doesn't really want to go into battery. Um, if you baby the slide at all, uh, it'll remain out of battery. So, um, and it doesn't take it doesn't take much. I mean, I can replicate it over and over. Um, and like I said, I'm not I'm not forcefully racking it. I get that, but uh, most of the firearms that I have, you can you can do that, and and the spring's strong enough to to pull that on forward. So, anyway. Couple things I noticed, um, like I said, uh, in 1100 rounds did have that one malfunction, um, and that could be reload related, uh, low powder charge or something like that. But just did have that one, that one stovepipe. I did notice the ejection pattern wasn't probably as strong as as some of the other striker fired handguns that I have, but uh, but it was ejecting them just fine. Um, uh, the other thing I thought was kind of kind of different or whatever was the was the um, was the indicator here on top of the slide, the little nub that comes up when the trigger is depressed. Um, it's out of line of your sights. It's over here, so you don't see it. But uh, it's just another kind of huh, wonder why thing. Um, and then if you were going to do something with uh, with some slide work, whether you're going to mill the slide or whatever, you'd have to uh, you'd have that to contend with to figure out what you're going to do. So not a not a not a deal breaker, but but uh, uh, something something inconvenient, I guess, if you were going to do some modifications. Uh, Overall, like I said, uh, the one of the things that that just really picked up on right away was just the overall feel of the of the handgun. Um, I've got smaller hands, but it just it fits really well. Let a couple folks uh, from work uh, shoot it as well, and didn't put anything in their head. Just kind of wanted them to shoot it, and see what they thought, and they both initially right away said, "Wow, this thing feels really good in the hand," and it does, or, or it does for me, and did for them, but. Uh, um, the trigger is, um, oh, the trigger's, the trigger's average. It's nothing to write home about, but it's, it's not the worst trigger I've ever had. The one other thing I didn't care about the trigger was even with the, with the safety depressed all the way, um, it still does stick out over the shoe. Um, so, uh, there was a couple days where, where I shot, uh, you know, close to four or 500 rounds in, in one setting. And, and that does, that does wear a little bit on your, on your finger, on the pad of your finger, just because the, the safety of the shoe there, the trigger shoe doesn't fully depress or it isn't flush with the, with the shoe. But, uh, anyway, that's the, uh, my take on the Breda APX. Um, like I said, it's, it's, it feels great in the hand. Um, it's been pretty reliable. Um, but, uh, just a few little little things that I thought were different or whatever, but uh, that's again my own opinion. Um, so take it for what it's worth. Um, anyway, until next time, uh, train today, train tomorrow, train always. The good guy never gets to pick the day. <laughs>